Welcome back, everybody. Uh, now, as we get ready for those November elections, especially the presidential race, voters, as we said, they got a lot of choices to make here, and they got a stark one when it comes to how they want to get the economic house back in order. And nowhere is that difference here more pronounced than when you take a look at taxes, budget, and what we decide to spend our money on. Now, both parties and their candidates offering their own take when it comes to taxes. Uh, Mitt Romney's tax policy plan mirrors that of House Committee Chairman and GOP. Certainly, um, I'd say a power broker right now, That's Paul it. Ryan. Uh, fair enough, right? Now, according to analysis by the Tax Policy Center, Romney's plan would make the deficit actually go up, but there's a but, and I'll get to that. He would extend the tax cuts, the Bush tax cuts, as Romney and Ryan both suggest, and that to a tune of about $480 billion a year, but it goes beyond that for the cuts. Romney's additional tax relief would also cost another $420 billion a year, bringing the top rate down to 25%. All told, the federal government would lose over a 10-year period about $9 trillion when it comes to revenue, and clearly on, that, on the top end, the wealthiest Americans would get the biggest break, again, from that same report. Now, Mitt Romney says that he's going to make up the lost revenue by eliminating mortgage interest deductions for high-income earners as well as deductions for state and local taxes. But that makes up only about $31 billion. So still, you're uh, closer to about $870 billion with a B. They, there's still a shortfall. Okay, to get that in order here, there's going to be some cuts here. Now, to get that balanced budget in order, and again, I'm talking about 10 trillion dollars here of non-defense discretionary spending when you slate it over uh, about eight years. This is an idea of some of the stuff that's on the chopping block, and it has to be, because when you take defense, Social Security, and Medicare off the table, which they said would not be cut, this is what's left. You got Pell Grants, aid to needy families, Medicaid, food stamps, unemployment insurance, and of the plan, the president of the Center of uh, Budget and Policy Priorities said the ensuing increase in poverty and destitution could certainly surpass anything that we've seen in recent history. Is this the kind of austerity plan um, that we need to have right now? Not only keep the tax cuts on the books for everybody, okay, um, but also increase the tax cuts, and you know the Ryan plan very well, it would increase the top end to 25%, have more of a flatter tax rate here across the board. Obviously less revenue that comes in, but to get the balanced budget that you guys want, you know, cap cut balance here, you're going to have to make draconian cuts. Well, Richard, let's let's uh, first a, a word on language because I think that's very important. Government takes, government spends, tax cuts or tax breaks give to the public. In fact, allow the public to keep what it has earned. The government operates with revenues that are contributed involuntarily by the public. So to refer to a tax reduction is actually a, a, a net benefit to the public when we're, when we're allowing our economy to grow. We have a higher number of Americans receiving food stamps, one form of, of the social safety net, one form of social welfare, a higher number of Americans now on food stamps, I think it's roughly almost 47 million Americans, higher than at any point in our history. Well, so so that, that is what current yeah, policies have get, brought. And you said, so if we, want, is if we want a relief from poverty fair and destitution, well, not, we enough. need to I, take a very different course. Just so course. we agree on terms, because Congressman Ryan, he said, um, that the social safety net has turned into a hammock. Do you believe that the safety net is so generous right now that it induces, as some have said, laziness or lack of uh, people who want to go out and find a job? Richard, this is not a matter in any regard of character judgment. Well, that's what but he said. It's turned into a hammock, his I, exact words. I'm, I'm dealing with the problem, Richard. Not with rhetoric, but with the problem. And the challenge that we have is that we have limited resources. We have an economy that is not growing. Our economic growth is far outstripped, about three times outstripped, by the growth in government spending. We have to do something. We cannot afford to remain on this course. We need to protect and help the most vulnerable in society. That's the goal of a safety net, to help the most vulnerable and do it effectively. We're not doing that now. We are creating ever greater numbers of okay, people but, but, who don't have the into, opportunities that they deserve. But Dominic, his plan, yes, but his plan, she's, she's going to be the host here now, she'll, she'll figure it out. But his plan clearly is you reduce taxes, 
mm -hmm. um, and most pronounced, the impact would be on the top one. And you grow the economy. Hopefully. Right, and Hopefully. the whole trickle-down thing. Hopefully. It's no. not a trickle-down. Trickle-down is what the federal government does, Richard. We, we are dependents okay. waiting for crumbs from the federal so. table. We want to grow the economy up. Fine. That's the I way this works. John Smith over here, who been laid off. We know too many people in that situation. Oh, too many. Um, whether his family gets food stamps, aid for uh, pregnant women right now. Um, he's a veteran, so veteran's disability. Um, his kids right now can't swing. He can't swing tuition, so they're getting some Pell Grants. All of those four things, and trust me, I could go on 20 or 30. Those are being cut because if you cut taxes for the top end percent, somehow, some way, even though they're only paying 35 percent now, less than they paid in 2000, we did great in this economy, I mean, half of what they'd be paying if they were living under the Reagan years, et cetera, somehow that's going to make John Smith's life better. Help me out with the logic, with taxes as low as they are right now, Mitt Romney paying 15%, how somehow John Smith's life's going to be better if you cut taxes on the top end. Mr. Smith's life has only, unfortunately, his economic prospects and those of his son have only gotten worse in the past three years. But how do Think they get, about it, how do they get better under Ryan? Work. I don't disagree with you, but because, how do they get better under Ryan? Because when we return power, what we're talking, your dollars, is that's power. This government, this United States, was founded on the principle that we respect the citizens, that we give power to the citizens. It was not to centralize in the federal government. Nobody is trying to violate the principle, again, that we help the most vulnerable. But, but we have gotten far beyond that and impaired our ability to do just that because Look, we have an economy that isn't growing. I, I've yes, listened sir. carefully to of everything course. you've said, but I want to go back to the last segment. Are you saying deficit reduction and cutting the budget at all cost? Is, is that the argument? Because I think many Americans believe that that's the philosophy of the Republican Party. It's taking a thoughtful approach to the fiscal challenge and burden that affects every one of us. Right now, our debt, approaching $16 trillion, amounts to $50,000 per man, woman, and child in the United States. It is so large. The debt held by the public is 90 percent. But, uh, but see, but the reason why I'm asking you that, Congresswoman, because product. in, in yeah, Detroit ahead. right now, yeah. they're cutting lights, traffic lights, yeah. in half of the city because the tax revenue is just not there. So, do, do, sure. but wait, but do Go we ahead. just cut at all cost? Dominic, if you look at Detroit, it's a perfect example. Detroit has been, uh, I would say, for worse, uh, not the beneficiary, but in a sense, the victim of decades of urban policy that have failed. I asked T Treasury Secretary Geithner, we're talking about taxes and regulations, tax burdens and regulatory burdens on the public that go beyond common sense. And I asked Secretary Geithner, this was about a month ago now in the Financial Services Committee, to name a state. You know, we have 50 states in the United States, all of which have their own climate, economic climate, taxes and regulations. I asked him simply to name a state in which uh, or a case in which a state with a higher tax structure, a higher tax burden, heavier regulatory structure, was growing faster than a state that had lower taxes and lighter regulations. And he couldn't name one because there is not one. Michigan, there are, there are, there are different New York, California, fair enough, there but Andrew, Michigan, California, Illinois, New York, I mean, we can name five states conspicuously. Well, guess, I've got four there. I guess my thing is... Okay, and Wisconsin before Scott Walker, but all of them have lost to states that are more welcoming to enterprise. But that doesn't work on a federal level because you're not you're not dealing with one state versus another no, state on the federal level. No, we're dealing with the world, the, Andrew, the is, talking, and we are losing out about, to the world. You're talking about different kinds of growth, and in the last 30 years, our economy has grown but the quality of life of the middle class, the quality of life of the majority of people hasn't. It's actually receded. Well, I think even um, Andrew, we're going to do the sure globe. You can, Let, you, you can argue that in the past three years, but that's under yeah, a I, very I high spending and, and at least, um, and I'm not speaking to imaginary voice, and I don't talk to our producer, I know we're going to have you, but we are actually fortunate because at this moment in time, as we make a decision over not just tightening belts here and, you know, doing the Ryan plan, you can look at Europe. And Europe certainly has got, I argue, a financial situation even worse than ours. So they took an approach, a whole host of nations, not just Greece, the UK, Spain, others, to do an austerity plan. The idea is, hey, we got rampant deficits here. I'll agree, before we even have a debate, that uh, 
their safety, their social programs had gotten too bloated. Okay, so we agree that. Mm. But what did they decide to do? They really went on the austerity level. The net consequence, unemployment has gone up. The GDP has gone down. Um, as a political consequence, for whatever it's worth here, um, they're now in a recession. And those people that enacted those, those actual austerity plans are now finding out in recent elections that they're on the way out. The economy did not improve through austerity. If nothing else, it proved the fact that when you have a fragile economy, and we've actually had growth, albeit modest, we've had growth in this country. At the growth. very Fine. You want to call it insufficient, I'm with you. Well, but the very idea is. right now that you're now going to you know, take an ax and cut to the bone for those that are barely making it and saying it'll make it better because I'm giving your employer more of a break, it just doesn't add up to any economic... Okay. And look at Europe. Okay. Why do we want to well, be Europe? Let's let's look at the example of Greece. Greece has yet to institute. How about the UK? Let's look at Greece for a moment. Greece has yet to institute because the UK is not in the euro, but Greece is. Greece has yet to institute an effective austerity program. They haven't even done it. Their electorate can't even agree on an austerity program. And and what's happening is Greece has had such, as you said, uh, yourself and your wife, such a bloated government relative to the base of people who are employed and working. I mean, they, they have not had yeah, an effective economy. Greece is economy. so screwed up, I don't even want to. But and look at Spain. Country, in Spain, wait, they're getting ready for bank the runs, only, Congress. The woman. only country, yes, in Spain, too, had uh, sectors of the economy in which the Spanish government allowed inflated growth, uh, particularly housing, as I understand I'm it. Not defending, is, I'm not defending how they got there. The question enough, is, what look, do you do about it now? Well, let's and they've look, done austerity, okay. and look minute, at the let's consequences. Look at, let's, what's, the one com what's the one country in the Eurozone that's doing conspicuously well? It's Germany. Germany, but of course, because Germany has actually had an economy that has b dealt responsibly with its fiscal Picture. But they, but the they other a, European companies They had a more solid foundation going into these problems. When the, well, when the tide turned in 2008, they were starting at a better level. But let's so keep to the basic well, argument they, of there's two choices. Yeah. We look at what Europe did, because Europe said the exact same conversation that we said here. Geez, Louise, we don't want to have happened to the states what happened to us. We got huge balance sheet but issues. So what are we going to do? We are going to cut Richard, down and have an austerity program. The reason and what has happened? It's a hot mess. Richard, we want they that? Haven't, Richard, they haven't, uh, those, those countries to which you refer have not even effectively had uh, the opportunity to implement those austerity programs such as they would be. And we're talking about the well, United States the now. Richard, the electorate that. Richard. They're voting out the, United put the States, policies The in place. United States of America mm -hmm. is unique in all the world. I think we can all agree. Yes. We have a, a, a unique culture. We have a vibrant heterogeneous population of people who are accustomed historically, my own mother, an immigrant from England as it happens, but who are accustomed historically to having the dignity of work and of being able to enjoy that reward. And you believe and if I go to somebody right if now, you work, if you millions work of harder, Americans, I yes. say I'm gonna give you more dignity by cutting 10 trillion out, wait, 10 trillion I'm over eight return, years out of every program, Richard, I'm going to give you dignity, I'm going to give your boss a raise, to, tell me thank you. Go to the businesses on Main Street in Warwick, New York, where I was yesterday, and talk with the hard-working owners of the shops you, and restaurants okay. there. Richard, wait one second. They are working very hard. They're making it because they care so the, much about their the community that, that work so hard. And what did they ask me to do? What did they ask they me to do? They want as many tax Please breaks as they can my get. Taxes. Of course they do. Of course, because, because you know what? Then they, because then they'd hire more people and they'd invest and, more and in pay, their community. But the, but the, the pain that, that they're giving to but those people is not where minute. it should be. It, You're and, saying and they're overtaxed right now? Absolutely. How were they doing in the year 2000? They were paying almost Richard, 40 we're percent in taxes. About They're the paying year, 35. We're now. talking about the year 2012, in which we have a tax cliff looming, a fiscal cliff looming in January 2013, but isn't, but isn't, and isn't, small employers know it. Small isn't businesses the lesson from know Europe it. That you don't need to make these cuts with a hatchet in such massive size and massive scope the way they did in Europe.